brakes not, not working. working. The world, the world is, not is not the same, same anymore. anymore. I was come back from church. Uh, my family was uh, were in the car with me. Some of my uh, brother-in-law's children, and they, they graduate from college and high school. They had graduation at the church, and we went there and celebrate there. Then after that, I think at about 4.30 something, we came back home. When I visit the, uh, from the army for to uh, Miss Nelly, and I saw many cars in front of me. I also saw a red light. Then I took my foot off the gas and I put on the brake. But you know, when I put, nothing happened. Then I put again. Then I yelled to my family. And brakes not working. The police came and he asked me what happened. And I told them brakes not working. That's why we have accident. So I tried everything I could to stop the car, but the brake just uh, it's not working. I feel like oh my gosh, we hit other cars and the people just running. People were. People were running and um, like everything just, just like go crazy. My daughter was crying and I hold her and I check my father and my, my brother and check my wife. I very scared and I worry about my family in the car. My brother, she, he was uh, unconscious at the moment. Police came, then I asked him anyone is okay and he said no somebody died at that moment uh, i'm very sad about that i didn't mean to hurt other people when i think about that is i feel sad and i feel very bad about the accident it's just something that is it's like a life change event for me and everyone involved. I was so scared and um, I just feel like the world is not the same anymore. The Lee's 1996 Toyota Camry slammed into the back of an Oldsmobile Sierra. Three people in that vehicle lost their lives, but they were not the only victims. This accident suddenly thrust the Lee family into a legal plight and sent this father of three, with a new baby on the way, behind bars. A jury convicted Kuafong Lee, and the judge sentenced him to eight years in prison. When they took me away from my family, I thought about how they, they were swiped for eight years. Lee was serving time at Lionel Lakes Prison when his wife gave birth to their new daughter, Angel. Then I decided that I never name her Angel because I hope that she will give me the strength. As Lee served his sentence, Brent Schaefer, an attorney hired by the family after the conviction, reviewed the court transcript and was astonished to discover so many things that were not as they should have been. Expert testimony that was simply wrong. Defense counsel that did not do its job. And then came the chance to revive the case in January 2010, the massive recall of Toyotas for unintended acceleration. Other drivers started coming forward, potentially strengthening Lee's case. We were racing against time. You know, from a guy who's got a family, a child who was born while he was in prison. One was only a year, less than a year old when he went to prison. You know, this man was losing precious time uh, with his family. So uh, we, were, we were in uh, a great hurry to get this brought before a judge. Meanwhile, a lawyer from Corpus Christi was representing the families in the Oldsmobile in a possible civil case. 
Bob Hilliard, founding partner of Hilliard Munoz Gonzalez and a renowned attorney against auto manufacturers, also reviewed the Lee trial transcript. With 30 years of experience trying cases, he asked, has anyone thought of getting Lee out of jail? My feeling was that Kua never had his day in court. I thought that uh, this was a bully verdict. I thought that there was clearly uh, a chance for him to not have even been convicted and that chance had been lost early on and then it was lost again and again and again. Hilliard joined Schaefer and the pro bono legal team which partnered with the Innocence Project all united in their belief that Lee should be freed. It was hard to stay in Texas when I started to feel the passion necessary to, uh, to do everything that I could to help him. The two lawyers went to see Lee together at Lionel Lakes Prison. You know exactly when you meet Kua that what he actually just illuminates the, the injustice that was done here. The first thing he did was he gave me a hug and uh, I'm very comfortable with that so I hugged him back and we started to talk and my impressions of him was a, he has a deep, deep peacefulness about him. Uh, kind of like a shama. When I first met him and he, we had a conversation together and he said he know, he know that I hit the bird, not the gas. I feel like he believed me and every time I talk to him, it seemed like he understands more, you know. I feel very connected to him the way he talked to me, the way he treated me. He doesn't treat me like a lawyer talk to a client, so I just, I feel very comfortable talking to him. <laughs> this man from Texas, a father of six, including a newborn, related immediately to Lee, the family man in his orange jumpsuit, who also had a new baby girl. The legal team knew there was no guarantee a judge was going to grant a new trial, even with new evidence, but they were propelled by their belief in Lee. From the very beginning, it was a tightrope without a net. I knew that I'd made a choice to be very high up on that tightrope, uh, and if we weren't successful, the fall was going to hurt. When Hilliard and Schaefer re-examined Lee's car, they discovered that witnesses had introduced major errors in the original trial. Thanks to this new legal team, Lee was finally granted a new chance to clear his name. Hilliard and his team exposed the mistakes that put this innocent man behind bars. And I think Bob in the courtroom when he stands up, um, you can guarantee he's going to deliver. The trial had gone well. The evidence had come in uh, very favorable to us. I thought that the, the truth was ringing clear and loud and I had a sense um, that the judge was going to do what she ultimately did. As the judge read her decision, Hilliard held Lee's arm. It was clear to me from the words she was choosing and the uh, direction that she was going that she was going to grant our motion and Kua was going to spend this night, that night at home. So I wrote a note to him. And Bob also wrote a note to me, you are free. But the county attorney announced that she would not seek a new trial. This was over. And finally, after nearly three years in prison, Lee was free for good. It, it was incredible. You know, hours earlier, you know, we met with him in a, in a cement cell with a steel door on it. And, you know, an hour later, he's hugging his wife uh, coming out of a jail cell. Um, I mean, it's raw emotion. I mean, it doesn't get any rawer than that. This is my dream. Uh, I have been about three years. I miss them. You know, every night I slept uh, in this little, little room or the cell. I think about this day, you know. My dream come true. Kua has changed me as a as a man and as an attorney, and uh, it's it's a combination, I guess. Uh, you know, I didn't need Kua's case as a man or as an attorney, but now I can't imagine not having it. 
because it has defined me in the short months that I have been fortunate enough to help him. I could practice law for 30 more years and this would still be my moment. I would like to say thank you, Bob, to help free me and go back to my family and go back to my children. We will keep in mind forever. It's a big, big gift from you and I will tell my children that you are my hero. hero. You help us. <laughs> love you. I love you too. <laughs>